Hello, it's Vides again and today I'd like to talk about uh, a special situation when you have a, a hymn tune or a special kind of melody and you would like to be able to find out the bass note which would go, go well together with this uh, melody, right? The melody would be put in the soprano voice, in the upper voice and you would need to find out the bass notes, not the, 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 the entire chord, for example, in four-part uh, notation, but just the bass note. Because if you have the hymn tune presented in, if, uh, in front of you in, in one single part, as a single line, right, and you play it with the right-hand part, it appears that it's very, very pleasing sound to add just the bass, bass line. You could play a bicinium, the two-part setting, in your liturgical hymn playing very easily if you just played soprano and the bass line combined. So, so it's when people tell me that they can't read um, four-part notation in hymnals, and they struggle and they don't have time to learn all of them together. One of the things I recommend, of course, is to play the outer part, soprano and the bass, because the bass is the foundation of the harmony and the, the soprano is the, is the melody itself. Okay, so if you, could, if you could play the soprano and the bass in your liturgy, you would be all set, right? Uh, after a while, if you could add the alto or the tenor, that would be nice, um, nicer, right? But uh, if you need to sight read a hymn, unfamiliar hymn, always um, pay attention to the outer parts. That works really well. And um, as long as you play soprano and the bass, you, your hymn tune is presented well and sounds pleasing to the congregation. You can add more more spice uh, with the registration, for example, principal chorus or the read reads. Uh, this way it will sound more powerful. But generally, at least two parts are required: soprano and the bass. So the question is, how do you find out which notes go well with the soprano in the bass? For example, if you have the hymn tune in uh, in C major and you have the note D. What kind of D in the soprano, what kind of note you would need to play with the left hand, right? What kind of bass note would work for the note D? Well, it's very, very simple, very simple. There are only three main functions of chords. Tonic chord, dominant chord, and the subdominant chord. You probably know that the tonic chord is built on the first scale degree. In C major, this is the C major chord. C, E, G, basically, the notes. Right? Um, in, uh, then the dominant chord is built from the fifth scale degree. Uh, in C major, this is the note G. And you build with two thirds, and this is uh, G, B, D. Right? And you probably know that the subdominant chord is built from the fourth scale degree, right? And this is F, A, C in C major. When you know this, you have everything you need to harmonize the soprano with the bass. Let me tell you how you can do this. When you play the note, for example, D, right, this ex example note, you, in your mind, you have to search what, what kind of, of these three, whether tonic, dominant or subdominant, works best, right? The tonic chord is C, E, G, doesn't work with D. The subdominant F, A, C doesn't work with D. And the dominant works well with D, right? G, B, D. D is present in, in this dominant chord. So whenever you see the note D in C major, you can always play the note G. 
in the base, in the left hand. Well, of course, there are various versions and possibilities you can add, not the root, but the fifth or the third of the chord. You can add uh, four note chords, uh, complicated uh, inversions, right? If you know how to use them. But if you don't, you can simply limit your, your uh, variety to these tonic, subdominant and the dominant chords and the and then you play uh, whether uh, the tonic note is uh, fitted fit for this suited for this uh, soprano whether the dominant is suited for the soprano note or maybe the subdominant works well so maybe if you have a hymn tune in uh, in c major in reality you would need c f and g sounds in the left hand only right of course artistically this wouldn't sound pleasing and uh, sophisticated if you need more variety you could add more stuff but the foundation is there and the first step is obviously this this way to add the root of each chord tonic subdominant and the dominant and see what kind of chord whether tonic subdominant and the dominant goes well with the any given soprano note in any given key. This is, I hope, easy to understand for any any organist, even the beginner, right? But the complication, the complication is this. What happens when the hymn modulates to another key? You have to discover that place and uh, then you have to mo also modulate and uh, when you discover this place and think, oh, maybe I see F sharp, maybe this is G major area, right? And in that G major area, you have to use tonic subdominant and the dominant notes of G major. No longer you are in C major, but in a, a G major. The same is when the hymn tune modulates to A minor, for example, you, you see you see G sharp somewhere, and this is the leading note of A minor scale, harmonic mode. And here you think, oh yes, this is the minor episode, minor section. And in these few measures, perhaps until the cadence, you can use um, tonic subdominant and the dominant of A minor too. So, and finally you can come, come back to C major whenever the hymn tune returns to C major also. So, in real, reality is not so simple because many hymns are modulating hymns, right? But if you think about it, you can write down the pitches. Not necessarily you can play them at sight, improvising the bass. That would be nice. But if you have time, you can write down the pitches. Even, even on the separate sheet of paper on staff notation. So you could have the upper stave for the soprano part and the lower stave for the bass part. I really recommend you first write down the, these pitches and after you can harmonize 10 or 20 hymns, then you can start improvising, improvising without writing it down. Okay? Try these tricks with your favorite hymn tunes without the bass, without the alto, without the, uh, the tenor. Just give the melody and supply the bass notes yourself. You will, you will discover how fun this method and approach is to yourself and to your congregation. Thanks.